kids. Keep it down, kids. Oh, I better not get a ticket. Oh, I'm going 85. Jesus! <laughs> that little kid giving us the finger? Fuck him. The first time I went on stage was October 10th, 1978. That night, I did three minutes, and I am still doing it 41 years later. You got to get the funny in life from somewhere. I got it from my mom. Orizella Anderson was my mom's full name. She was very funny. Those 18 years at home, what they developed who I am. All you have is what's inside you. For me, that was my mom. A comedian's like a pot of good soup that boils on the stove and all the ingredients, and mine was taken off just at the right moment where it was perfect in my mind. And that's how my comedy is created, and that's where I come from. Since I'm a kid, women always gave me a hard time. My mother never breastfed me. She told me she liked me as a friend. When I was 21, my mother said, only a doctor for you. When I was 22, she said, all right, a lawyer, CPA. 24, she said, well, grab a dentist. 26, she said, anything. If he could make it to the door, he was mine, you know? Last month, I was driving my mother across town, and she says, who are you dating? And I don't tell uh, my mother anyone that I'm dating because it always would result in a fight. My mother's deeply conflicted. She wants to have grandchildren, but I don't think she wants me to have them with another woman. <laughs> my mother wants to marry me. I told my shrink that, and he did something I've only seen blackjack dealers do. He looked at me, and he went... jelly off of my boyfriend's penis and all of a sudden I'm thinking oh my god I'm turning into my mother you know it's like... my mother calls me and leaves me these messages on my machine are you gay only gay screen of call Tonight is... Conan. Who's that? It's me, your conscience. <laughs> what do you want? You promised to call your mom today, and you didn't call her. Why didn't you call her? favorite song. She taught me a lot about life and love. She said, number one, Bridget, your father's a prick and you can't trust anybody but yourself. Yes, check, done, I got it. Number two, she said, Bridget, a woman isn't really a woman until she tries anal. Hit the truck! There he was, just standing on the street with them lazy blue eyes. Was he looking back at me? I said, boy, where you going? Don't care where you've been, you want to drink fucking love. It's a win, win, win. What I, what I, what I gotta do. What I gotta do to get that dick in my mouth. What I, what I, what I gotta do. What I gotta do to get that dick in my mouth. Everybody. What I, what I, what I gotta do. 
What I gotta do to get that dick in my mouth? One more time. What I, what I, what I gotta do? What I gotta do to get that dick in my mouth? What I, what I, what I gotta do? What I gotta do to get that dick in my mouth? <laughs> What I gotta do? Mother! What I gotta do to get the dick in my mouth? My mom is truly one of a kind. She's like the person that you meet and you never forget. She can be kind of mean, but you somehow she gets away with it. She's always being a little bit naughty. Got a cigarette in her hand doing something that she really shouldn't be doing. And she doesn't give a shit. I guess I can do what I want to. <laughs> I'm wealthy and retired. Oh, yeah, you're real wealthy. Take a look around. <laughs> Mom always wanted to have six kids. It's Bridget Brock Bryan, Brooke Braden, Britton. When we were growing up, Mom was like in control, you know, a teacher trying to make money and whatever. But uh, she's got a real naughty streak in her. When I was young, she would walk the grocery stores and like a, a moo moo or whatever with no bra on and just like around the house with her with her tits out. I mean, you can do that when it's family, you know. But she also did it in in stores and restaurants and stuff, and she just didn't care. And there's something that's really liberating about that in a small conservative town. It was like, this is my body and my room, and, and I'm Freddie Everett. Get the fuck out of my way. Right, Mom? That's right. Still that way. <laughs> <laughs> my mom pulses through my performance. It's really like a, a tribute to her. I mean, really, a, a lot of it is from my mom. It's like the sort of um, the silly sides of her, like the mischievous, like the foul mouth and like the tit swinging and all that. <laughs> She's mischievous, aren't you, Mom? I try to be good. Doesn't always work. <laughs> I remember getting off stage one night, and one of my mother's closest friends was at the show, and she came up to me, and she was like, you think you got your, your, your sense of humor all by yourself? Mm-mm. You know where that comes from. She was always the funny one. It was not me in the house. I wouldn't have been, no one would have picked me as the, oh, yeah, you should be a comedian. It would have been, your mum should do something. She's got something, a little bit of magic. She's not funny when she tries to be. Like, she can be really corny. But when she's just being sincere, well, it's really touching, but it's also kind of funny. My mom would go, uh, Bobby, Bobby. I go, yeah, and then she'd fart. <laughs> right? And then, you know, as a kid, a woman's not supposed to fart, right? And she, you thought that she was going to say something. And then she would just not even laugh. She, she'd go, baby. And I go, what, mom? And just walk away. You know, she was like one of those people that, like, even if there was a certain civility, like, even if the kids were misbehaving, she'd be like, shut the fuck up. And then she'd answer the phone. And she'd be like, hello. No matter the relationship you have with your mom, good, bad, or indifferent, they play such an important part in your life. They're just such a phenomenal source <laughs> of inspiration, determination, and so many other things, and humor. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Um, I know this is a documentary. You want people to be honest. Um, I don't know who my mom is, um, but I give her all the credit. I, uh, you know, I know who my dad is, but uh, the mom, they're still not sure. You know, spend my life trying to figure it out, and hopefully, maybe in this interview, you know, shed some light on it, you know, so. Judah, just tell us about your mom. Uh, according to uh, Shirley is, is, is the mom's name, yeah. She runs the world in a good way, yeah. Four people in this room today say what? Yes. Well, 
you guys gonna help bring this show to life? <laughs> this is the only thing I had. I lo I did left my whole cosmetic wow. bag at home. Ah, <sighs> ding, dang, done. That's it. My mom, she's very positive, upbeat, but also very funny and clever. She wouldn't tell us to be funny or she wouldn't say she was funny. She has a funny thing about her. So just being around it is influential. Oh, I feel funny every day, yes. <laughs> I wake up feeling funny. It's true, I don't know why. Now look, David's the comedian, but his brothers are so funny too. Brian said, um, you know, Mom, I said, you should go do some. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> What did Brian say? And Brian. Oh, it was so great that Brian said. <laughs> I know that. There's no jealousy here. Brian wishes he could be a comedian. But I did tell him to, um, I, he, I did say, go play an amateur night, you know, a comic night. Oh, and, make him go up? Yeah. And he, he's funny, you know. That. I know. But, but it's, it's not quite. He said, now look, David's the comedian. I'm a smart ass. There's a, a little difference there, about a million dollars. I more. spun smart ass off, though, into bigger things. Did you? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, That's what you Everyone were. has to start off as something. All right, I have to do rehearsal, so you're going to watch? OK, yeah. My dad split when we were four, and it was tough. She had two jobs, and we couldn't pay rent, and she was stressing all that. And the fact that she got us on our feet, wobbly legs, but got us up and out, and instilled enough stuff character-wise to get us to work hard and try and not quit means a lot. And that means a lot to her to see that, you know, we're, we're all doing OK. Welcome, everybody. On the show tonight, we've got Lauren Pete Moshe. <laughs> Uh, American Airlines apologized after it forced a passenger to change his Hail Satan shirt. Later he died, went to hell, and then found himself back in an American middle seat. <laughs> a stripper decapitated her boyfriend's Star Wars obsessed son after having sex with him. For an obsessed Star Wars fan, that's still a win. <laughs> you don't have to get that bad. You no, know what I mean? tonight is a little rough, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, you can tell me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, the whole show is a little rougher than usual. A little rougher than usual. But do, they're all good, it's just, some are just make me cringe. show because they're shooting a documentary and my mom Ooh. who's in the audience it's a documentary about comedians and their mothers it's called comedians <laughs> comedians is it called comedians no it's called commies i'm not in the documentary because my mom's dead his mom's dead yeah yeah what's happening in birmingham what's going on hometown Mama in the building the nightmare. My mama over here, she didn't came out. That's cool. Way to go, way to go. Anybody ever have a mama that whoop your ass a lot growing up, and then when you get a little older, then they be nice. They be trying to use God to explain why. <laughs> That's how black mamas do. They talk all that shit the first 20, 30 years of your life, and then later on, they be like, you know I was just trying to bring you, bring you up the right way. That's all. I'm trying to do it, baby. I did the best I could with what I had. <laughs> if you think I'm gonna put it in the home, I ain't gonna put you in the home, Mama. I love you. I'll add a bedroom on your ass. My mom's here. Uh, uh, she's from Belmont. Yeah. I was born in the um, hospital in Charlotte. I was born a big baby. More than 10 and a half pounds. Yeah, I don't want to brag. I came out of the womb hungry. <laughs> Just hungry and looking for titties. <laughs> yeah, nothing's changed. <laughs> I was what you call a tomboy, um, which is a future lesbian. <laughs> My mom was trying to get me to dress more like a little lady. And uh, for some reason, her vision of what a little lady should dress like was that she would put me in these, like, power suits. I look like a 50-year-old woman lawyer 
in my power suit. Just, mm, mm, mm. No offense, Mom, you guided me as well as you could, but there was some things you left out. <laughs> For example, you never bothered to tell me um, you, that a woman um, is supposed to shave um, the bikini line. Like, I didn't know, I didn't know that. Because I was normal girl from here, and then werewolf crotch. <laughs> you never told me sh shave it and let it just be prickly and bloody, and then enjoy, enjoy the beach. So, but I forgive you. <laughs> Sorry about that joke. Just as long as it's not true. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. I'm not gonna put you in a hole. Oh, okay. Why would I put you in a hole? Thank you. I was beginning to sweat it. Oh, you free babysitting. Free babysitting? Yeah. Free babysitting. This is the first place I ever did comedy, was this room. In this room right here? In this room right here. March 21st, 1999. It was my first time. This officially is... telling a joke was in this room. So where was I when you were doing all this? I don't know, at the house, I you, guess. You wouldn't even ask for a ride? No. Oh, that's right. You didn't want me to. Because you was tripping. I feel like when I told you I was thinking about comedy, you went to this long thing about you just need to get that damn degree, boy. You don't need to be thinking about nothing else, boy. I never told my mom I wanted to do comedy because I knew she wouldn't approve of it. And I didn't want to hear about it. I was, I was in college at Florida a and and I got myself arrested for stealing some jeans at a department store. So I was, I was on probation. And so when you have a parent who thinks that they're going to lose their child to, to the justice system, to walk into their room and look them in the face and go, yeah, I'm going to ride a Greyhound with meth addicts and tell jokes in Kentucky for $30. Don't worry, I won't flunk out of school. Everything will be fine. I know I just almost went to prison, but didn't. But I got a better plan. Comedy. Isn't that what we all want in society? Everybody, no one wants to go around being unnoticed. Everybody wants to be some famous character or something. Everybody wants to be remembered for something. If I choke one person in this room, I'm just an idiot black boy at the end of his rope who killed somebody. But if I choke nine or ten of y'all, I'm the Tallahassee Strangler. I've got my own made TV movie. I've got a cookbook. I'm going around the world. I'm making speeches. I'm playing insanity. Not guilty. He walks free. And of course, I get my own autobiography. Choke hold. <laughs> Memoirs of the Tallahassee Strangler. <laughs> With a full word by O.J. Simpson. <laughs> definitely felt like my priorities were in the wrong place. And she definitely made that clear. Like, what will it take for me to do comedy without you bothering me? Like, that's the thought in my head. It's just, all she talk about is school. Huh. Well, if I make good grades, then she can't say shit about me doing comedy. So I got back in school my junior year, and I made the dean's list the rest of the way. When Roy graduated, he came home, he took the degree, he threw it on the bed. He says, you can have this. I don't need this degree in my profession. So I accepted it graciously. I framed it and put it on the wall. And from this point on, I guess he must have been right. These days, I feel supported. You know, my mom, no matter what I've been passionate about, She's always supported it, man. Oh, you make me feel so emotional. I don't know, I'm being real. I told somebody the other day that if I became a porn star, my mom <laughs> would click the link just to make sure I get an advertising dollar. Like, my mom, whatever porn I'm in online, my mom would click, click the ad under the porn just so her baby could get a dollar. Really? <laughs> 
I knew exactly what my mom wanted me to be. When I was... 12, 13, it was like, you'll be a doctor. I was like, I, sure. I tried going to college for about six months, and then finally I told my mom I want to, I want to be a comedian. You know what I mean? And she cried. She just, uh, what? You're going to be homeless? Like, she thought comedian meant homeless. My dad, like, was not the quintessential Asian dad until much later when I decided to pursue Aquafina, and then all of a sudden he became that dad that's like, you should become a sonogram technician, you know? Which I didn't mind. I actually, out of me and inspector, air traffic controller, and sonogram technician, those are, these are three things that he, like, avidly pushed me toward. My parents had all these kids that went to college, maybe they didn't finish college. They essentially graduated with degrees in, like, you know, uh, philosophy. So by the time they got to me and my my older brother, they were like, you're gonna study finance or accounting. Comedy had a dirty, I don't know what it was, what she was referencing in her head, but it had a, almost like I'm saying I'm gonna be a stripper. I remember my parents were like, you want to be a jester? I don't understand. And I'm like, no, no, mom, I don't wanna be a jester. I wanna be a comedian. I don't juggle balls. This is all awkward now. So I did all these things that everyone told me to do, my dad and my mom told me to do, and it ended up that I hated finance. The first time she saw us on stage, we were at a, a comics. Mm -hmm. We were at comics, a comics comedy club, which is no longer in existence. Rest in peace, Rest comics. in peace, comics. Mm -hmm. But we were on stage, we did about five minutes, it did not go well, Bum. and our mom was like, so you, are you sure you want to drop <laughs> out of law school to pursue this as a career? And we were like, mom, we're, we're going to figure it out. Give it time. Give it time. You know, All the great bomb in the beginning. You're going to live here forever with me, telling jokes. I have to listen to your jokes. This reminds me of my mom, this whole setup. She loved drapes like this, you know? <laughs> my mom had 11 kids, you know? Oh. Women always go, oh. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. 11 children, what the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> the same human, man? <laughs> 11, yeah. I was 10th, I just slid out. <laughs> I was home from the hospital before she was. I was there, I'm starving! <laughs> My mom would hate that joke. Oh. Chloe! Slid out! <laughs> Sorry, Ma, it's funny though, right? <laughs> she was quite funny, really, in her own way. <laughs> she loved butter. First words out of her mouth at a restaurant, can we get some extra butter? Well, let us seat your party first, ma'am. <laughs> okay, but don't use the word lettuce again. I mean, I don't think I was a hilarious kid, but when I would talk, people would laugh. And I would go, what are you laughing for? They go, you're so funny. I go, I'm being serious. And then they would laugh more. And my mom was like that too. I go, mom, you're so funny. She goes, what? She'd see a fat guy and she would say, boy, he's got a big bay window. And I would go, what the hell is she talking about? And then later I was at a house uh, thing to look at a house and they go, we have a beautiful big bay window here. And I thought, oh, my mom was so much funnier than I knew. Luckily, I inherited her brain, you know? What? What? How many Filipinos in here right now? Let me just hear how many Filipinos. Yeah. That's a lot of Filipinos. <laughs> Somewhere in Glendale, there's an empty hospital. <laughs> Just doctors walking around going, where's Bernadette? <laughs> She's at the comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not Filipino, that's how they talk. My mom talks like that. 
Right? It doesn't matter how exciting the news is, my mom's face always looks depressed. <laughs> Most exciting news in the world, depression on the face. It's your sister's birthday. <laughs> your brother's getting married. Well, that sucks, Mom. <laughs> my mom never runs out of words. She loves the, the, the W's. The W words are my mom's hands down her favorite words. What? Why? Where? Who? And then when he can't answer any of them, she goes like this. Exactly. 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 My mom got divorced, it was kind of like, yeah, you're divorced now. Raise these kids, you know what I mean? Like, my mom had nowhere to go. She's an immigrant woman from, you know, from the Philippines, and now she's divorced in the States and trying to figure out how to take care of these kids, and it was just a fucked up situation that we were all in, man. We were all, we were all broke, you know what I mean? And, you know, and times were tough, you know what I mean? My mom is part of my act. I talk about her nonstop. Like, it's all I know about is my mom. So yeah, when I, when I started doing stand-up, the first, uh, I'd have to say 13 years, I was scared to talk about my mom. Like, I didn't want to. I knew that there was funny stories to be told, but I didn't know how to do it on stage. So it took me a while, man. I was really scared to talk about my mom, but, but once it started, it was over with. My mom was tough as shit. I, I remember one time I was at a shoe store and I was fucking up the shoe wall. You know the shoe display wall? Fucking it up, just putting shoes all over the place, right? And the salesman saw me and he was like, hey, get the fuck out of here. Fucking up the shoe wall, get the fuck out of here. He's cursing at me, right? He didn't know my mom was in the back of the store. He couldn't see her. <laughs> She's 4'10". My mom popped around the corner. She was like, hey, who are you talking to? You don't talk to my children like that. Who are you, huh? I want to speak to the manager. And the guy started making fun of my mom's accent. Oh, you wanna speak, speak to the manager? Huh? You wanna talk, talk to the manager? And my mom goes, oh, that's funny. You're making fun of my accent? I live in your country and I speak two languages, Tagalog and English. You live here, how many do you speak? One? You're stupid. <laughs> Oh, did you think you were gonna get that stereotypical Asian woman? Like, sorry, I'm so sorry, okay. Fuck that. This is a goddamn ninja, man. And you don't need subtitles. You understand everything she's saying. She said, fuck you. That's what she said, dude. Don't you talk to me like that. Huh? Like I'm stupid? Fuck you. <laughs> Yo, she's crazy. My mom's very sassy. My mom's just very sassy. She loves turquoise. She just loves American Indian pieces. She loves anything turquoise. She collects them. She loves anything, anything American Indian at all. She loves it. And she wears a ridiculous amount of these obnoxious, like, plaque-sized things. <laughs> and then she acts very surprised if anyone compliments one of them. She does a real modest play. She goes, oh, thank you. Oh, I forgot that I had this on today. That's so... <laughs> Isn't that funny? I totally forgot about that. How sweet of you to notice. Hm, what fun. Meanwhile, it's like a Navajo graveyard covering her entire left breast. I think there's a lot of, like, wildly strange, inappropriate, you know, moments with mothers and daughters, and it's just, it's too close, you know? So it's funny. My mom is a bleeding, bleeding heart liberal. She loves to read a cab driver's name to them. She likes to kind of bite into an ethnic name and overly honor it. It's really alarming. I get very nervous when she's about to read a name tag because she's going to bite into it and she's going to rock on. Excuse me, Sarah Hanje. What a marvelous name. What region is that? I'm like, he's not a wine. He's a man. Leave him alone. The worst part of his day is that you have access to his name right now. 
And she goes, I just want to say, Sarhanj, that I am so sorry for some of these terrible things President Trump has been saying about Muslims. I'm like, that's not even the good way to say it. That's the Klansy way to say it. You can't say Muslim. That's the evil Klansy way. And she'll be like, we think Muslims are fantastic, Sarahanje. And you and any of your wonderful Muslim brethren are welcome in our country. He's just glaring at her like, I'm Sikh, you white bitch, get out of my cab. And she's like, cultural bridge built. Who's next? I'm like, that was an active disaster. She likes it when I impersonate her. She gets upset if I don't do her. And if I don't talk about her, she'll go, where was I? And that's her way of saying she's disappointed. She'll go, I thought I was going to be in your talent show, which is what she calls my stand-up. Family. My family's favorite restaurant growing up was Hooters. Like, we, we loved a good chicken. You guys are like, obviously, obviously that was your favorite restaurant. And uh, we loved Hooters because they had amazing chicken wings and they were cheap. And we were fat and poor, so it was awesome. When my mom was dating this, this guy, uh, I remember one time uh, we were trying to figure out where to go eat one night. And uh, I was like, oh, well, let's, let's just go to Hooters. And he was standing right here beside her. And my mom, out of nowhere, she's like, I have never <laughs> eaten at Hooters. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? My babysitter was a Hooters waitress. No. <laughs> no. Like, you hired two Hooters waitresses to hula hoop for my brother's 18th birthday party. <laughs> I have no, those were just two girls that love to hula hoop. <laughs> I have never been to Hooters. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with the mom jokes that that she does on stage. In fact, at uh, I'll be at shows, and people at the shows will say, how can you stand this? I mean, are I'm not you, being uh, spirited, though. Are you OK with what she says? I said, yes. The truth of it yeah. is, she would rather me talk about her and her be the center of attention oh, that's than true. me not talk about her at all. Oh, that is The so worst true. part would be not including her in my set. That's true. Then no one's looking Although at Although I her. never say include me in something. Anything I do in my life can be on the stage and I have no idea what it's going to be. She, she enjoys attention. Just say I'm a good sport. You're a good sport. Thank you. And you like attention. Well, that's true. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you already. How are you? How are you guys doing? How are you? Now, several years ago, I leave my apartment, go to my agent's office, call my mother on the phone because it's free. We're chit-chatting. <laughs> We're chit-chatting away, and my elbow hits the phone, and we get disconnected. Just, just by mistake, we just get disconnected right in the middle of the conversation. I didn't call her back right away. And I neglected to tell her I'd been calling from my agent's office. She is completely paranoid. She thinks something happened to me in my apartment and that's why we got disconnected. When I got home, this was the message she left on my answering machine. It's a real message from my mother. She's completely out of her mind. Judith, are you all right? Did you fall down? What happened? Where are you? I'm a wreck. I don't understand this. Maybe I'll call Marjorie and tell her to go over and find out what happened. <laughs> Judith, where are you? All right, here's the clincher, Ronnie. So long. <laughs> what? What is that so long? Here's a great photo of my mother. She was Jew-ish, beyond Jewy. She was 
extremely overprotective. And I, we, we talk multiple times a day. My mother would always leave me messages. I mean, I've been playing her messages in my act since the 80s, and I have not erased any of the messages. I don't know, it's still, I feel, still feel a connection. Do you want to hear any? All right. I don't know what happened to my toothbrush, but can you buy me three mediums so I can hide one or two? At the moment, that's all I require. I don't think my teeth will fall out before then. Okay. So long. It's been a delight. You know, my mother was sarcastic, but also very classy, and she, it's been a delight. You know, she, she's funny. She's like saying, I hate my life. This has been fantastic. See you soon. There is a rhythm, there is a cadence, and there, the pausing is absolute. Like, you're like, you just, you're waiting for more. You don't know whether you're going to get it, and you don't know what it's going to be. I mean, it's so... And that's what a joke is. It's a surprise. It's like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. And that's how I grew up. I mean, imagine being a little girl and growing up in a house where that's how you communicate. I never heard I love you from like parents, siblings. We didn't hug, you know, whoever won ups with a clever, you know, uh, quip is rewarded. That's how we got love. Judith, this is your measure. I have nothing. So please, when you come, bring a hunk of cheese. So long. I've always loved that quote, laughter is the shortest distance between two people. And I really feel that, like that, that thing of like when you laugh with a, uh, you know, with a loved one, it's just, it's heaven. You're the same in that moment. My mother didn't have an easy life and, uh, and I had to make things kind of okay. She had a great sense of humor through it all, but uh, was someone that needed uh, a bit of cheering up. When you're a kid, you don't know what depression is, but you're so intuitive at that age, you're, you're just good at kind of uh, making things all right and, uh, and laughing it off. You know, when I think about it, uh, you know, I'm saddened by it, but there was such joy in her. When you talk to other comedians, it's there's almost like a beat where they go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, my mom was depressed or my dad was depressed, but you, you don't think about it as a kid. You just go, well, that's who they are. But making that kind of OK or, you know, making, making the tension go away in the house is such a, it's a wonderful, that kind of defense mechanism of humor, the idea of making, making the atmosphere in the house okay. And I think, you know, most of us are running away from unhappy homes. Good. My next guest is named uh, Louis Anderson. He's a comedian. He's making his first appearance on national television. And he's gonna be opening tomorrow night in Las Vegas, the new comedy store at the Dunes Hotel. And he'll be there through Sunday night. Would you welcome, please? Louis Anderson. Louis. I can't stay long. I'm in between meals, so bear with me. <laughs> I went shopping today. What's this one size fits all stuff? Being in California, being fat, and uh, try to get into this California life. Went to the beach the other day. Every time I'd lay down, people would push me back into the water. <laughs> you know, I guess with my material, you know, I started out with fat jokes. And then one day, I stumbled on this family material. I learned that people like the stuff I said about my dad being a mean, and I didn't realize other people had a mean dad. I thought I was the only one.
There it is, 1122A. Same doorway, four bedroom, 11 kids. Yeah, my dad used to fight the guy in this. Mr. Wilson, he would fight him. My dad was menacing, the meanest alcoholic father. Huh. I think my mom was overwhelmed by my stand-up at times. When I talked about my dad, she put her hands, crossed her hands and rubbed her arm, you know, and she really missed my dad and didn't like me saying those things. We were poor. We were so poor sometimes I didn't have money to get things. Like my mom's birthday, I always hated that if I didn't have money. He'd make her a coupon book usually, you know. Yeah. I'll wash the dishes. <laughs> I'll do the laundry. Yeah. I'll kill dad for you. <laughs> My mom, the sweetest person. Louie, thank you for that coupon book. <laughs> comics have a strain in common. Most comics struggled. So fun. I think you can hear it in their jokes. I have a memory of uh, my dad beating my mom and I'm under the kitchen table with my little brother trying to protect him and running out and kicking my dad occasionally and running back under the table. You know, I see that's my my trauma, so I had to fix that. Tr I had to make something out of that trauma. I had to build something out of that trauma. I think comics are about control. I think they're trying to control the whole situation because they had no control growing up. I really do. I think we're trying to control things, and that's why we go in front of these people, and we hold court for an hour, an hour and a half, and they listen to us. Somebody listens to us. Somebody cares enough to pay their money to come and see us. And somebody gives us all the love and care and kindness that we didn't receive growing up. When I was young, my mom passed away and um, my grandma stepped in and took on that role. I don't know how I coped with it. I think um, I definitely use humor in some respects. Like when you're that young, you don't really have a voice for yourself. so you become this like emblem of sorrow. And to avoid being vulnerable in that specific way, I used humor. You know, this horrible thing had happened to me, but like, if I could be okay right now and, and I could, you know, genuinely want you to laugh, just take the laugh, you know? Like at the very least, you know? So I think um, I was asked this question, like when was the first time you killed in a crowd? And I was like, when I was five, but I remember also thinking like, do, do they just feel bad for me? Like, are they laughing? Are they giving me pity laughs? Because I don't like that shit. I don't want pity laughs from you. My grandma, she, she basically took me in as her youngest child. She indulged my spunkiness and spoiled me with food and things like that. And also, I think she spoiled me with, like, believing that if you really wanted something, that it was possible. You know, she never thought that what I was doing was weird. She always supported me, and I think that, like, for her to even, you know, at this age, to see my movies and to understand them and to give me feedback on them is, like, very special. And she, she was really happy when that all started. Fucking pick up. Fucking pick up. Hello? Mom? Can I, can, we, can I ask you some questions about growing up? You, you growing up or me growing up? Me growing up. The movie's about me, it's not about you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Ask me anything. So, um, was I, um, uh, was I a bad kid? Uh, I kept saying that you are not bad kids. Oh, really? So Why? when I, when I did Why crystal meth, when I did, when I, when I, when I, when I stole 10 grand from you and I, and I bought crystal meth, that didn't, that didn't offend you? <laughs> oh, you think that all kids snore a crystal meth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
My mom's name is Jeannie, uh, but her real Korean name is Chungja. She has a thing that I can do, which is like just publicly embarrass herself. And we don't have the same kind of thing that most humans have where we go, oh my God, I shouldn't do that or say that in public. You are on the head of the Dragon King Grindar. All right, you've just plunged your dagger into his brain, so you're stabbing and stabbing. All right, go ahead, Bobby. Okay. Like this? Yeah, perfect. Keep it going. Okay, now uh, give me a bigger stabbing motion. All right, remember, demon blood is good. It gives you health points. So open your mouth. Yeah, drink as much as you can. Oh. Drink it from both demons. Oh. Don't get it in your eyes. Demon blood can blind you. Yeah, swallow the blood. Oh. I don't get embarrassed easy, and I think that my mom has that ability. She just goes for it, and I, I have that same thing, too. We would go to the mall, and she would, like, like sleep in the, on the floor in a mall and take a nap. And, like, I remember one time she goes, there's a fountain. There was a fountain. She could go swim. In, in a mall, there's a fountain. She said, go swim with Steve, my brother, right? So we'd be, like, waiting around, and the security would be like, you're not supposed to swim. This is not a swimming pool. And then my mom would be asleep in, in the mall. So she was like, she was like that lady. Her number one goal was for my brother and I to go to Harvard. But all we, we went, we got close, we went to rehab. We went to rehab, you know, pretty close. When I was in rehab, we had this thing called knees to knees, right? You form a gigantic circle, like a room like this. And in the middle of the circle, you have two chairs. And you kind of sit, you know, knees to knees with your dad or your mom. And you tell them, like, stuff that you kept a secret, you know, on group level. So I, so my dad, <laughs> so my dad and I were in the center of this room. There's hundreds of people in the circle. And I told my dad that, um, um, that I was molested by a guy with Down syndrome. And um, there was complete silence in the room. And then my mom started laughing. <laughs> and then my brother started laughing. And then my dad started laughing. And we all started laughing all at the same time. <laughs> and we, I almost got kicked out of the rehab because they thought that we were like insane. But that's how, you know, we, we use, you know, when, you hear, when you're in a dark situation, we, the Lee family, we get through it by just cackling like hyenas. What was the song that you and Dad had as your, um... Our song? Yeah. Oh, shaboom, shaboom. That was your song. It was. Shaboom, shaboom. La, 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 la. How about the song you used to sing to us about dad when we were children? Uh, it's a song about your father. Your father's a prick. <laughs> He's a prick. <laughs> your father's a prick. <laughs> He's a prick. <laughs> well, he was. <laughs> he was a big bad boy. <laughs> With a little dick. Mother! Can't say that. Don't know how I got six kids out of it. <laughs> when I was little, my parents got divorced. So my parents really didn't like each other very much, so you sort of had to pick sides. And um, I picked the side of the person that uh, drove me and cooked for me. <laughs> She'd be like, get in the car, we're going for a ride. <laughs> then we would go sit outside my dad's house. <laughs> remember, Mom? Oh, I do remember. I can't remember that we ever caught any girl over there. Well, we sure sat outside, and we did, we did, Mom. Remember when you were little and your mom used to get shit-faced sitting in her blue chair? And then she said, get in the car, we're going for a ride. Do you remember that? Me too. And we would pull up right behind my dad's place, right? 
And she says, get out of the car and go and look at the window and tell me what your daddy's doing. So I run over to the window. I get up on my tippy toes up in the bushes and I look in the window. And I see my dad and he's in there with Cindy, his secretary. And he's doing to her what I used to do a, to a box of instant jello back at Seco Park Pool in 1982. He was just... Even though it was probably bad, like when she would take me for these late night drives, I had fun. <laughs> and when we used to stalk my dad, I thought that was kind of like an adventure. It was a side of her that was wild and carefree that was trying to break out, you know, that she's sort of uh, embraced in her older age. That's, those are just the parts of her that I've always loved. And my shows are meant to make people feel happy and joyful and celebratory. So those are the parts of my mom that live in the show. <laughs> Kristen, look at this one. That's really spring, isn't it? Yeah. You don't like it? No. I, this I like, but then I'm like, is it too vintagey? That might make me sad. I just think of all the, just death. Who? Just death, you know. What do you think of these cats? They're fun. They're really fun. Ooh. Eureka. Vintage napkin just really feels like domestic death. Hey, look, there's the bugs. No, don't do it. Go your shoulder. Like the color, right? Well, let's just say for now, yes to this, but we'll take you in. I mean, we lengthen the pants and do something. No, you can't like say that. yes to that one. Your best out is going to probably be all black to be on the safe That's so side. so boring. Then you don't want, do you want That's an orange, so do you want an orange shirt on? I no, mean, I, want I don't want to wear orange. Do you want a green jacket? I love my school, but it got ugly what colors. What about a dark, I don't like, I don't look what good about, orange What about or an emerald to a dark green jacket? A pine green, that could work. Bingo. There's gotta be something wrong with that. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I'm sure. What's shoe mean? Shoe. That's S-H-O-O. -O. That's the way I spell it. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> now, ladies, I need your help. We're trying to find my mom here, a man. How are we going to do that? How we, what do we need to do? You going to put yourself online on one of those dating apps or I something? I can't imagine. Sw you can start oh. swiping. What about a one-night stand? No, I don't want a one-night stand, Emily. <laughs> you don't want to hit it and quit it? <laughs> no, I want a relationship. OK, so she's a little bit of a prude. <laughs> Let me see. Um, look like a super highway. Look like What's that guy's name? Chuck Jack? Chuck? Chuck Berry. <laughs> That's a Chuck Berry look. Look. Oh my god. You can't wear no jacket like this without walking up to women and just going, young lady. Young lady. Brian, don't do that. Up close. Very good. That's perfect. Boom! Ah. React. There you go. Two, three. I won. Three to two. Yep. Good win. <laughs> oh, what about this joke? What's green and has wheels? Don't know. What? Grass. I was lying about the wheels. <laughs> I probably inherited my laugh off my mother. I yes, mean, not, I think so. not the type of laugh, but just no. that I laugh a lot. Because yeah, that's I right. remember my mother was always laughing all the time. I, I, I'm really happy that he did make such a successful career. But truthfully, he did it all himself. I just have motherly pride in that he's my son. Hey, there's a bit of me there. 
<laughs> and it's having fun, <laughs> telling jokes. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. On tonight's show, we got Lauren, Pete, Moshe over there. You just saw. Hey, it's your mom. <laughs> My it's mom's Pete. here. I know. We're going to get to that. My mom's in the front. Look at her. Yeah. I'm 82 today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, today. Oh. Oh, it's a Oh, you like me? <laughs> you have to hold it now. Oh, I have um, to hold it. Oh, my God. For the oh, bit. Oh, my God. She's oh, my like, God. thank you, Pete. It's, there's no circulation in my legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. We're going to leave right. these guys, and we're going to come back with just my mom and the plant. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit at the end. It'll be fun, right? Yeah. You got any left in you? In the tank? I got a lot in me. Can we kiss you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. I'm here with lovely Judy, and uh, I thought because you're here, we would ask you a few questions about the show. Um, so, uh, is it better because you watch the show in the morning? Is it better to watch live or on TV? I watch in the morning, it's not live. No, would you, did you like watching it tonight live? Oh, this live, yeah. This is I better. loved it. It's fun, right? It's fun, right? <laughs> uh, it's fun. Did anything go too far for you tonight? A little. I, I, I took out some monologue jokes because you were here. We're Thank gonna... you. Yeah. <laughs> I heard gonna, in um... Las Vegas you've taken out a whole third of a show when I was there. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, is yeah, true? yeah. <laughs> Because sometimes it's it's uh, it's clever. Don't get me wrong, but it's, oh. a, it's it's a little racy sometimes. A little racy. It's called naughty. Yeah, it gets bad. <laughs> Everyone, you. say happy birthday to her. Uh, see you next time. Thank Mama. You. Oh, thank you so much. It was wonderful. Come on. Oh my God, I love it when you run and skip. You want to skip? <laughs> oh, when I come around okay, here? Let's skip. Where are they? Oh, they're behind us. Skip. <laughs> skip. My mama likes coming out to the shows, yeah. And I like getting her uh, feedback. You know, she always comes in with some kind of an angle and perspective that I hadn't considered. And she's harsh. She is... No, there's no bullshit. There is zero bullshit ever. And and she won't come in soft. She comes in fucking hard, just fucking lays it out. You know, she'll yell or say this shit to you no one else would even think of. And if they did think of it, they wouldn't fucking say it. You know, they'd be too polite to not say it. She just fucking lets it out there, you know. We did a set in Philly last year. Uh, she said that some of the jokes weren't developed. <laughs> they were ha like they were half baked, straight up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. That's right. They were half baked. We mm -hmm. were stoned when we wrote it, uh, <laughs> but they were literally uh, <laughs> created very half baked. Yeah, very half baked idea. She wants us to push our ideas further. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's weird performing for your parents. You don't want to say filthy things, even if you know they're not gonna, you know, be disappointed. It's just weird, you know. Like I made I accidental eye contact with my mom while I was saying mediocre hand job. And it was one of the worst moments of my life. Just her, even though she was jazzed and encouraging. But you don't want your mom to hear about, you know, mediocre hand jobs. You know, my mom's gonna watch this and she'll be giving me her full review on this. So my mom will probably criticize my posture. If I, if I wind up making the cut, she'll probably criticize my posture for, for something. Or, you know, perk up, you know, get some more energy, you know, something. There'll probably be some kind of comment there. First time my parents came, I was doing stand-up seven years. They always wanted to come. I never wanted them to come. Um, and it went well. And then they come every time now, but I can't look at them. I can't look out. I would do jokes, with, you know, that were really dirty, or my mother and my father mentioned it, and I just can't look at my parents. Because my mom's a very nice lady. You know, and my dad, you know, my dad looks more like me, and he's a guy. But my mom, I still see as just this nice lady. And I feel really bad saying things in front of her. It is healthy, right? Yes. 
Yeah, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be comfortable talking about anal in front of your mother. That's not, a, that's not a good relationship with mom. That's mentally ill, yeah. You know, I was in Aspen, Colorado. The entire city closes at 10 o'clock, because it's a ski town, and they're all yuppie douchebags. They want to get up early, get on the slopes. You know, ugh. So I'm there one time, it's after midnight, I was starving, there's nothing open. I'm like, all right, I'll call an escort service. <laughs> and I'll tell you, New York is expensive, Aspen is disgusting. <laughs> I'm on the phone with the service, and I'm like, well, how much is it to see somebody? And the woman's like, ah, uh, $3,000. <laughs> I'm like, you out of your mind? And she's like, well, she's really pretty. Ah. <laughs> Do I get to cut her head off and keep it when I'm finished? Hi, sweetheart, it's Mom. How are you? Jimmy, I know this is a little awkward. We heard the show, and you were talking about ways of the evening. But you know what? Dr. Phil always says replace something with something. So I was thinking, you know, you have that nice gym downstairs. And, you know, just for like 20 minutes to half an hour, and uh, you would feel a whole lot better. You'd lose a little weight, you'd tone up, and you relieve, you know, tension and stuff, and you'd be meeting other people. I don't know, honey. I just thought it might be a good thing. When she left that message, she, she wasn't shocked by what she heard by that point. But that message was probably in 2001. So here I am almost 20 years later. Uh, they've seen me 50 times since then. And you exaggerate in your act, but there's also enough truth in it where they know there's a, you know, this is not 100% made up. So I think that by a certain point, they became desensitized uh, to who I was in, in, you know, sexually and all that. So they're like, yes, yeah, it's just him. Hi, Ma. How are you? Hi, honey. How are you doing? Good. Were you, were you embarrassed when you heard me talking about the stuff you heard me talking about? No, not really embarrassed. I, I don't know. I think I was just being a mother. Of course, you can make your own choices. You know, I just thought it could be helpful, but looking back at it... It was helpful. I, no, you were right. I, it was good advice. I, it, was, it was ridiculous. I mean, I, I know... That. It really wasn't. Dr. Phil was right. I went to the gym. I felt better. It was like it was a home run for advice. <laughs> oh, well, that's good, honey. <laughs> Are you guys coming to see me? Uh, I'm in the stress yes, factory. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm so excited. Yeah, and Aunt Gail's coming, and Aunt Carrie, and also I think Carrie's son Ryan. He's a lawyer now. Oh, we're looking forward to it. I know your schedule's very busy, but maybe when it. Uh, I'll slow down a little. You can come and visit. You know, that would be nice. We'd like that. Yeah, I will come down. Um, I just got to find yeah. time, because I'm gone every weekend. I'm either going up to I know. Montreal, or, or I'm doing sure. gigs. Sure. I know. You're very busy, honey. That's, that's showbiz, you know? You can't help it. All right, I love you, sweetheart. All right, I love you, too. All right. Bye-bye, honey. Bye, Mom. I'm just so nervous. It's been a long time since I've um, performed in, you know, in front of my parents. And usually when I do uh, something that's important to me, I, I like to have some sort of lucky charm with me. I'm not that superstitious, but if I, if I have a rabbit's foot, you know, I feel better and I couldn't find it. And somebody stole my monkey's paw. And um, all I had left today was, was uh, a camel's toe. And... <laughs> So, you know, I've been rubbing it all day. This kid has perfect comedic timing. People will comment, you know, watch her, she's good. And they don't know And you're... they don't know that we're, we have anything to do with her. And even yesterday, I was a little ways behind her and the group of people were going, that's Kristen Shaw. She was on this and that. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and I, I walked by going, yeah, <laughs> you did good. 
-hmm. I can't not be proud of, of what I see and who she is. Thank you. According to my mom, I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Use that for the trailer. <laughs> my mom uh, thinks I'm good. <laughs> it's a joke, you know, because everybody's mom thinks. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> but you are. This is your pleasure. Do not forget my watch. We have not been separated this long since I was eight. Another week, I will have a nervous breakdown. I need it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My mother passed away in 2015. The last time I saw her, she's in the Hebrew home, and I said, I have to go. I love you. And her normal response would be, you too, and I, you. You know, she loved to speak in Old English. Um, and I said, I love you, and she said, not as much as I love you. Great, now I have to cry. And I couldn't, I, well, first of all, I was in shock and I was like, you know, what do I say? And I, I said, no, I love you more. And she said, it's not possible. I said, no, I, I, I love you more. And she said, Judith, I'm not gonna argue with you. And that was it. I mean, she's so a part of me. No one looks at you the way your mother does. There's nothing that compares with the mother's love. When I was 23, my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and it was one of those things where uh, it was kind of a shock because we always kind of thought that my dad was going to die first and because he was, like, smoking and drinking, and she was uh, smoking and drinking, but she was doing it a lot less. And then she died, and I was just like, what the hell am I doing? The fact that she dies at the age of 53 is just cruel. And so I realized you only get one, one trip. So it's like, you gotta do what you want. So like the fact that I think she got robbed of, you know, uh, doing maybe some things she wanted made me wanna do what I wanted. My mother died in September, and I did my first stand-up show at the end of January. I mean, you could sit there and go, so it was like her laugh had died, and then you heard it again on stage, and it's like, I don't know, maybe. That's one of the good things about being a human. There's one or two people that give you unconditional love, and then everyone else is just a jerk, right? When my mom died, we had to get a 26-foot truck to get this stuff out of the basement. You know? My mom was a pack rat. You know, not a hoarder, though, because we had aisles, so. I'm coming down at 7! Love you, Ma. She's so great. She's so cuckoo. <laughs> I miss them. I miss my parents. I don't want them back, but I miss them. I miss them. <laughs> there are voices echo in your, in your head. You can't help it. Yeah. You can't help it. You think you can, but you can't. I was hoping my mom would show up, but you know. <laughs> 
She might be here, you don't know. You don't know. You slip on butter on the way out. <laughs> I started playing Christine in Baskets. I became my mom. Remember those old ghost movies where somebody, uh, spirit comes in and invades the body? That's how it felt. I just used her kindness, her humanity, her intelligence, and her kookiness and combined them all. Who doesn't say, I wish I would have done more, I wish I had talked to him more, I wish I would have spent more time with my parents? And you know, some people don't have that. But I wish I would have done more. I wish I could have been nicer. I wish I could have, you know, done it. But I couldn't. I couldn't at the time. But I did celebrate her uh, in front of the whole world. How can you beat that? And maybe you can, if, you, if your parents are still alive, maybe you can beat that. Maybe you could call your mom. Hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. You're looking swell, Dolly. I can tell. Dolly, you're still growing. You're still growing. You're still going strong. I feel the root swaying. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs>